OCN Word of God to the world. Hello, welcome to the program The Transformers. Coming to you from the OCN Broadcasting here in Los Angeles, California. And I'm your hostess, Reverend Equia Osebunsu. And the, the, our previous studies, we started the topic on identity. And we are going to finish it this week. You see, identity is very important thing that we have to, each one of us have to know who we are, especially when we call ourselves Christians. See, now from a couple of weeks from today, we'll be celebrating Christmas. You see, people are busy shopping and, you know, preparing for the occasion. But do we have our identity with us? When God calls us, if we were to die today, see, our salvation relationship with Jesus gives us our identity or our passport or ticket. Just as when you are traveling, you need your ID with you. So we are going to finish on the studies that we started the previous time. So if you missed the first part, I will encourage you, you can find it on YouTube. So you can get a uh, part one from YouTube so, you know, to make it easy for you. But before I start, I'm, from today's topic, I'm going, lesson, I'm going to recap from what we studied last week, uh, uh, the previous time, sorry. See, we studied on identity and what is identity? We learned that identity is who someone is the qualities, beliefs, etc. that makes a particular person or a group, of, a group of people different from others. So our identities can be our name. I mean, when we say we, the identity, the first thing come to our mind is the name of a person or right? the name of a group of people. And we see that God, you know, has connected our identities with our purpose. And so we learn that even in the Bible there, are some people that God changed their names. You see, God has given a, can give us new identity, or even people can label us and give us new identities. Or we can change our names to have different names, different identities. But in all this, the most important thing is that the new identity that you have, does it go with you? Does it match with you? Is it going to help you fulfill your purpose? It's a very important question that we all have to ask. So we learn that in Genesis chapter 17 verse 5, God changed Abraham's name. His name was Abraham and God changed which was exalted father, and God changed it to father of many nations. And we also saw, saw that um, in Numbers 13, verse 16, Moses called Hoshea, son of Nun. Moses called him Joshua. Joshua's name originally was Hoshea, and Moses added Ya to, to it, to make it Joshua which means God is salvation. His original name was salvation because Joshua really loved God. He, was always, he always wanted to be at the presence of God. And so Moses called him God is salvation, which means his name is the same as Jesus' name. And we see that in, in, in 1 Samuel 25, Abigail, Abigail's husband's name was Naba, and his name meant a fool. And really, he acted as a fool. And because of that, David nearly killed him and his whole household. But Abigail interceded for, for him and, and actually for, for her family. And David spared him. And Abigail said something that was profound. He said, yes, because her husband 
is, a, is acting as a fool because that's what his name means. And we see that Matthew 1, 23, Jesus' name was given to him by God, by the angel Gabriel. He said, you, he told Mary, he said, you will bear a son and his name shall be called Jesus or Yeshua, for he will save his people from their sins. For he will save his people. That's what his purpose was to save us from our sins. See, sometimes people name their children, they don't even know the meaning of the names. And then they just give the names to them. You see, in the Bible we re read about Jabez. I believe most of you have heard about the prayer of Jabez. His mom called him Jabez because he gave birth to him in pain. And Jabez suffered. But God changed his destiny. So it's very important that we watch even the name that we give to our children. Even some of us too, have, we have good names for our children, but then we change their names with our own spoken words by labeling them, calling them fool, you are a fool, you are a fool, and then your child starts acting like a fool because of the words that you are speaking. So we... For the sake of time, I'm not going to go deep because we have a lot to cover today. And we learn about, actually I want to read one scripture and then we go from there. John, the Gospel of John 1 verse 14. It said, but to as many as did receive and welcome him, he gave the authority, power, privilege, right, to become the children of God, that is, to those who believed in, adhere to, trust in, and rely on his name. See, the Bible says, as many who believe in Jesus, God has given us new identities. That is so good. God has given us new identities. So, it means we've been adopted by God. Just as when somebody adopts a child, the person gets, takes your name, your last name, which means the, the person, the child, has got a new name. The child is yours. Even though the child is not your biological child, the child legally is your child because you have adopted that child. Why did you adopt that child? You did that because you loved that child. So in the same way, God loves us. And he has given us new names. He has adopted us to be part of his family. So whenever you adopt a child, that child has some privileges. You see, when you have children and you adopt a child into your house, the child goes to your fridge, just as your own biological children go to the fridge. They don't ask permission before they go to the fridge because they know that that is yours. That is their food. That is, the fridge is, is, it belongs to you. And so they have privilege to go to your fridge and eat whatever they, they, is in the fridge whenever they are hungry. But you see, sometimes we have to train the child, you know, the children that we adopt them, we have to speak to them or train them in such a way that they will be adjusted or adopted into the family so that they will not, you know, they will not um, feel shy or timid or fear even to go to the fridge and eat when they are hungry. Because if we don't do that, some of the children may still feel the, uh, the orphan spirit will still be, be in them because they, they feel that you know, they don't belong to that family. So we have to train those children you know, for them to be adjusted and see that they belong, they are part of the family. 
So there are some privileges that we have whenever we, we become the children of God, where we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior. One of them that we learned was that we share inheritance with the Lord Jesus Christ. See, the Bible says that Jesus' name has been exalted above all names. Jesus has given us the authority. Matthew 28 says, he said, all authority in heaven and on earth, authority and power has been given to me. The difference between authority and power. There are some people who have power, but they have not been authorized to use their power. Satan has power, but he has no authority. We have authority and we have power. Because the authority that we have, we have it in Jesus' name. He has given it to us according to Matthew 28. That's why we, we can say, in Jesus' name, devil, I command you to go. Because authority always comes from above. It comes from God. That was why the, the Jews, they asked the Jesus, they said, whose authority are you doing this thing? Because they saw that Jesus had power and he has authority. So that was why they, they were asking him. So authority comes from God. That's why if, even God wants us to obey the laws, the government of in our nations, the government of the land. Because why? Because all authority comes from God. That's why Romans uh, 13 says we have to submit to authority because all authority comes from God. Even if your Prime Minister, your head of state, your president is not doing the right thing. You have to submit unless maybe it's contrary to the word of God. But even that we have to submit and pray that God will change things. And so God wants us, you know, to have, have that authority that he has given us and that power that he has given us through Jesus Christ because it's delegated authority or power that he has given to us to act on his name. And so we share inheritance with Jesus. And also one of the privileges is that we sit in the heavenly place, places with the Lord Jesus Christ means Jesus will rule with Jesus and we will reign with him. That is very, very powerful. It's profound. And one of the privileges that we learned was that we have new identities, just as you know, I started before. Because when you start, when you change your identity, you use your new identity. For instance, if, if your name is... Agnes, and you change your name to, to maybe um, love. Your new name is love. So you don't use the Agnes anymore. You use love. Why? Because you don't want the old name due to some reasons. So now we have new identities that we have to use. We bear the mark of Christ on us. God has sealed us with the Holy Spirit. That is our mark. And so we have to take our new identities. One of the privileges is that we will judge angels. See, 1 Corinthians 6, 3 says we will judge angels. And so if we will judge angels, then we should see ourselves that, you know, we are, we are precious in God's sight. Just some age says, who is man that you are so mindful of him? God is so mindful of us that he called us his friends. And another privilege is that we will judge the world. See, we will judge 1 Corinthians 6.2. We will judge the world with the Lord Jesus Christ. And one of the privileges that I believe we could, didn't get it was that we are royal priesthood. See, the Bible says we are chosen people, we are chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people that have been called or chosen for his own possession. See, God called the Abraham, and through Abraham, he raised up the nation of Israel. 
And God said, I want to use you, people, for the world to see who I am. I'm not doing that because of your righteousness. I'm doing that because I love you. That was what God told the Israelites. So God loves us. That was why he sent his son Jesus to die for us. So that he will use us to show the world who he is. So that the world will see his power, his love, his wisdom, his, 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 his integrity, his faithfulness. We will see the attributes of God through us. The character of God through us. And so God wants us to set ourselves apart so that he can truly use us for the world to see. Because you know what? The Bible says God's eyes, they are looking to and fro, searching all over the earth, looking for people whose hearts are perfect so that he will use them, he will manifest himself through them for the world to see who he is. So, this saying one more uh, privileges that we have and then we will go to an important topic that I want to hit on. And one of the privileges is that God doesn't hold our past against us. You see, there are some people who the devil always accuses you of your past. And the, your past is holding you. It's not helping you. I want to encourage you, let the past go. Because God doesn't remember your past. Why do you have to remember? See, Romans 8, 1 and 2 says, There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, those who walk not according to the flesh, but by the Spirit. So if you have accepted the Lord Jesus, God has forgiven you your sins. If the devil comes to remind you about your past, just remind the devil about, your, about his future. Meditate on the word and, and believe in it. And through that, you'll be able to walk in your freedom. Now, okay, we are going to study on something very important I want us to share this evening. You see, every human being we have made up, we made up of three uh, parts. Oh, three beings, our spirit being, our soul and body. This body, whenever somebody dies, of course, we know that this body goes back to the earth because it's from the earth. But the spirit and the soul live. They go to God. Because the spirit doesn't die and the soul too doesn't die. Because spirits don't die. And so, when, when, when the, somebody is saved, the body, the, 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 the spirit is saved, but the soul needs to be transformed. So that's why this program is transforming. So how are we going to train our soul, our, our mind? You see, the soul is, is, is your, your mind, your will, and your emotions. So we have to find a way of training our souls so that we will be able to, you know, to walk in the way God wants us to go. Because Romans 12, he said we should renew our mind once, Romans 12, 1 and 2, that we should renew, um, let our minds be renewed. We should offer our bodies as, as living sacrifice unto God. And let our minds be renewed and that we, shouldn't, we should not be conformed to the things of this world, but be transformed. So if we, don't re, we can't renew our minds, we cannot be transformed. And if we can't be transformed, then it's very serious because God wants us to change from one stage to another, just as we see the butterfly change from the egg to the egg, and then to the lava, to the pupa, to the butterfly, because that was, that's how the, that word um, um, change or uh, transform comes from. 
metamorphosis, metamorphosis that we have the word metamorphosis in, in biology. So it's just like we have to change from one state to another, but we have to be growing and developing to be like Christ. And so one of the things I want us to say is that read the scriptures. Reading the scriptures is very important for us to be able to, you know, to train our mind. Because you see, we have to train our mind like we train our pets or we train our, ch our, our children. If you have a pet, I believe you, this is, you understand this point or you have a child. You have to tell the pet, sit down, sit down. A couple of times for the dog to understand or the pet to understand sit down means he has to sit down and then go out. You have to train, you have to train the child. So uh, the child or the pet. So in the same way, we have to train our minds to take what is pure, what is good, what is pleasing, what is acceptable before God. So whenever any thought comes to your mind, what you have to do is to, you have to cast that thought out. You take it and then you take it, you use the word of God. But if you we don't know the scriptures, it will be hard for us to do that. So we have to speak the word of God. That those who are led by this, those who are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons and daughters of God. It's written devil, and then cast it out from your mind so that and then replace it with the mind of Christ, with the thoughts that are pure, holy. So that you can walk in righteousness and holiness. So, like if you don't have any Bible, you need to get a Bible. If you have a Bible, you don't know how to study the Bible, you can get a devotional book that every day it will give you some scriptures that you have to read so that you, you have to discipline yourself. Because you see, if you don't discipline yourself, you can't do it. You can't do it. Because even the word Disciple comes from the word discipline. So you have to know, each one of us have to know how to, we have to discipline ourselves. Like at least they discipline themselves so that they will be able to be fit and, 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 and get a, the medal that they, they are pursuing. So we have to discipline our mind, ourselves, of, of reading the Bible and also putting the right thing in our minds. Because garbage in, garbage out. We have to put the right thing in our mind. And the second one is speak the word of God over your life or over your situation. You see, there's power in the spoken word. We have to be mindful of that. I remember I read um, a book by Dr. Paul Young Cho of South Korea. He's got a very big church in South Korea. And he was saying uh, how one of his friends who is a neurosurgeon was telling him about the power of, um, of about the nerve speech nerve that the speech nerve controls all the nerves in the brain so if the speech nerve says i'm tired all the nerves you know follow the the speech nerve so that's why the bible was is saying that we have to be Good listeners, we have to be slow to, uh, quick to listen, but slow to speak. And then we should confess positive words. Because the spoken word is very important. What word do we speak to our spouses? What words do we speak to our children? Are they positive or negative? So we have to be mindful. Even if the doctor has given you a, a negative report now, I believe it's time for you to speak life over yourself, to believe in God or, or the word of God. Stand on the word of God and speak positive word over, over yourself. And as you speak the positive word over and over, it goes deep into your mind, into your, your brains, into your soul, and then you see that things will start changing in your situation, in your life, in your marriage, in every area of your life. It's very important. And one of the things too is that, you know, replacing negative um, thought with positive. It's, it's very important that we obey God because 2 Corinthians chapter, chapter 10, 3 to 6, 
He said, uh, the weapons that we fight with, they are not carnal, but they are mighty through God for the pulling down of strongholds. But at the same time, if you read downwards, he said, we take every thought captive and bring it to the obedience of Christ. And we should be ready to punish every act of disobedience. So any spirit or any thought that will exalt itself above the word of God or the knowledge of God, we must be ready to cast that spirit out. And we must be ready to punish the devil. But then our obedience must be complete. So which means for us to be able to cast the devil out, to resist the devil, we have to know how to submit to God. We have to know how to yield to the spirit of God. Because when we are disobeying God, we can't cast the devil out. The devil will, 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 will just, you know, triumph over us. He's going to triumph over us and he is going to spank us. He is really going to give us big, a, a very strong beatings. So we have to know the word of God, submit to God, then we, we resist the devil because the Bible says submit to God and resist the devil and he will flee. So it's a principle. It's a kingdom principle. The kingdom of God is principles. We have to obey God. Even though we are royalties, we don't have our own right to do whatever we want because royalties have to submit to the king. The subordinates, they, everybody has to submit to the king. The king's word is final. So in the same way, God's word is final. We have to take God's word and we have to submit to one another and submit to God so that we can resist the devil, so that we can take our new identities and walk in complete freedom because it's a must. We need to walk in it. And that we walk with power, with authority, just as the police walk with authority because they have been authorized by the government to, to, you know, to arrest or criminals or to arrest anything that is contrary to the law. So we also have to take our identities. Now our time is coming to an end. I want to encourage, encourage you viewers to write to OCN, write the address, the information is on the screen. Write to us and share your testimony with us because we want to share the, your testimony with other people because we overcome the enemy with the blood of Jesus and with the word of our testimony. And also, I want to encourage you to support this network financially. Go to the website, already you're on the website, so you go to the, to the donate button and then hit it and then donate to this network so that we'll be able to broadcast 24-7 because that's the heart of God for us to reach the whole world with the gospel of the kingdom. So I want to pray. I have about two minutes. I want to pray for you now. And also you can mail in your check. The address will be on the screen. I want to pray right now for people who don't have relationship with the Lord. It's getting to Christmas. You are busy doing your shopping, but you don't know whether you are even going to live to Christmas. So if you don't have relationship with the Lord Jesus, I want you to think about it. Make the right decision. You can do it now or you can go do it at home. Open your mouth and say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you died for my sins. I repent of my sins. Come into my heart and change me. I believe that you are, you, you are my savior. You are my deliverer. You are my Lord. You are my everything. And fill me with your spirit. In Jesus' name I pray. And if you are a prodigal, you are a backslider, it's time for you to come home. Father, Abba, Father is calling you. There's no time. Time to waste. Time is running out. And God, I want you to look for a church. If you don't have a church, write to us and we will look for a church for you. And there's a church here too, in case you live in Los Angeles. Come to All Nations Church. The address it actually is just the same address as, the, as, the, as OCN. So thank you for watching the program Transformers and watching OCN broadcast.